Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkovic. Today we're going to talk about some tips to make a great camp for you. Um, we're here in Kansas. I was just down there because I actually heard stuff down there and I just videotaped some deer down there. Um, but we're going to talk about what some, some tips to make for a great camp setup for you, whether it's just camping with your family or for hunting. And uh, there's some tips and tricks that make life a lot easier. It doesn't matter what type tent you're using, although I highly recommend canvas. Uh, the beauty of canvas is that it breathes, so you don't get any of that clamminess, that uh, damp feeling, that wet sleeping bag, wet clothes, dampness, none of that because of the breathability of canvas. Um, this tent is 100% waterproof. It's been in torrential storms, so don't think canvas isn't waterproof. There's nothing better than canvas, in my opinion, if you're camping by a vehicle uh, because of the fact that they are heavier and uh, but they set up quick they're easy and uh, they're they're pretty indestructible and they're the best I, I won't I won't camp out of a nylon tent ever again and I have a couple canvas tents they're amazing so now a couple things to note is um, you know for hunting trips we use a trailer Okay, trailer comes in real handy. Not only does it come in handy, uh, and I already have to have this trailer. I didn't. I did buy one specifically for hunting purposes originally. My last one, which I then converted into a power washing trailer, was originally bought as a hunting trailer. Uh, it was a little five by eight, and it worked fantastic until I got deer hit the wheel last year on the way to Kansas and totaled it. Um, so I had to get a new one. So I got a 6x10, and the reason I went bigger was because I'm using it for a pressure washing trailer. But any little trailer will work. But what's nice here is um, you can store all your stuff in it. You can put everything in there camp-wise, and you can leave it in there all year long. So if you're not using it for a pressure washing trailer or a work trailer like I am, you can leave your camp stuff in here the whole time too, and it doesn't take up any space in your garage. But it's nice to have everything in here. Nice, simple, easy access to have it in a trailer. Plus, we can actually turn this into a, a bathroom in here too. Like when my wife and daughter come, I set up a, 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 a five-gallon bucket with a toilet seat on it in here. And I have a deep cycle battery that runs this light that's up here. And they can come in here with this back ramp shut using the RV door. They can come in here and go to the bathroom in privacy. We can hang a solar shower from right up here too. Take this jet sled, put that jet sled there. I take that little heater that's right there in the corner. I put that heater in here and they have a heated room with light and everything. It's actually a shower room for them that they can use 100% perfectly. Um, we also will take that solar shower and that jet sled right there. And uh, what we do as guys and stuff like that is when we have that stove in here, we put a stove right here. I will hang that solar shower from here, put that jet sled right here and take showers right in here too. But that uh, simple, easy uh, shower setup, like I said, having a trailer makes it nice uh, to have that privacy if you want it. Here we don't need it because we actually have bathrooms at this particular campground. But a jet sled like that and then the solar shower, there's that heater. Right there, a little cooker heater. It does both cooks and heats. Uh, but I keep the solar showers right there. That black bag right here. This is a solar shower. And uh, you just fill it with water. I got kettles in here right there. Two kettlefuls of water. And uh, you are set for a two kettlefuls of hot water and a uh, kettleful of cold water. And you got plenty for a shower. That little cooker heater, as an example, right here. Can be used as a heater standing like that or you know so you can take it set it like that and let it be an actual heater or you can turn it up like this and you can put pots on there and cook on it so it's a fantastic little thing i'll have links to all this stuff down below for you um but that's a uh, that's a great little setup right there um but so having a trailer is a nice feature it just lets you keep everything nice and neat and combined um if you can if you can swing having a trailer or if you already have one using it now inside if you're using nylon you really can't do much heat wise in there because they don't breathe okay nylon doesn't breathe canvas does breathe so we can use a heater this is a 360 heater as they're called and this thing is amazing this thing what we've used this down into the six in the single digits um you know we still have the wood stove but the problem with the wood stove is you got to get up a whole bunch of times to keep filling it and then also you know in the night you'll have to get up three times a night to fill it but also once you come into camp you start that heater that uh, wood stove up it takes a half hour for it to get hot enough it to actually make a difference in here 
this will get this tent in 10 degree weather will make this tent you know smolder and hot inside of here literally in about 10 minutes um turn it on fire it up works great so even when we run that stove we still use this heater most of the time and it's just a fantastic uh, again i'll put links down below for you uh but you know and it takes up no weight and doesn't cost much i mean they're about 100 bucks for the heater and uh two propane tanks one in the trailer and one here and i mean you're good for 10 days of uh of use and you don't have to have tremendous amounts of wood cut wood mess with the stove all that kind of crap just sweet and easy so those heaters worth their weight in gold highly highly recommend them um and i actually have a fan too in there that if i want to i can put a fan on there uh, it's a fan for a wood stove again i'll put links below but so it activates by heat i will lean it on here and it's got a wire that hooks here and it tips it down so any of that heat that's going up it blows it back down to the ground where we are down here on cots uh so but that heat system fantastic i can't say enough good things about it and it's not expensive and it works flawless if you're running a canvas tent highly recommend canvas tents disco bed cots disco bed cots are incredible there is no cot that's more comfortable i cannot emphasize that enough i have 10 different types of cots the disco bed style cot is by far the most comfortable and it has some nice features a there's only four points of contact two in the front two in the back so you don't have another set of feet here and another set of feet there that you got to try and level out so this thing levels out on uneven ground very very well they also will turn into bunk beds okay inside the case for these which is buried under here right here inside this case there are extensions that will go on there that will let you take this one and put it on top of this one to create bunk beds okay so now in the same floor space as two people I can actually sleep four people. Okay, so that's an amazing thing. So if you're a family, you know, a mom and a dad and a couple kids, um, you know, in this space, you could have four people sleeping in here very, very comfortably. Um, so they're they're not cheap. I think you get two, but they're not expensive. I think it's like, I don't know, I'll put links to them below. Um, I've had these now for about nine years, but uh, um, you're probably looking at like 400 bucks or so for a, uh, a set for two of them. Uh, so, you know, if you're going to run two sets, it might be $800, but I'll tell you what, they last forever. Powder coated steel frames. They're uh, built like a tank. Uh, they're the tents that military use for all of their uh, camps and FEMA camps and all that stuff. Um, there, there's a reason for it. There's no better cot out there. Um, I can't emphasize that enough. There is no better cot and they're super comfortable. Look at how wide that is. I mean, they're so wide and uh, you got so much room to roll around on them. Highly recommend disco bed cots. They are phenomenal. Um, I, I can't say enough good things about them. Sleeping pads. You know, you can get fancy but if you want to or not, but sleeping pads, even in a uh, scenario here where you're using a cot, a sleeping pad like this is still really nice. It insulates you from the cold air that gets underneath the cots. Sleeping pad is very good. doesn't matter if it's a cheap Walmart one like I use. It's made out of foam uh, or a nice, like a thermorest here like John has, one of these air pads, but something that will insulate you from uh, the cold air that comes up under the cot is a tremendous factor. These little tables, worth their weight in gold. Okay, uh, they're simple, they're cheap. I'll put I'll put links to this stuff for you, but they just uh, they give you work surfaces, they give you a lot of room, make it handy. Nem or Nebo lanterns, these poppies, best ever period that there is, uh, because they are dimmable. Okay, so you turn it on and it's on and they're very bright, but you press and hold that button and you'll see it start flicker and see it's dimming down. And it's going so low that it's, you know, it's not working with the camera rate right now. But you can dim them down low. And you can also make them come out of the bottom by closing it. If you close it up, now the light comes out of the bottom. And, uh, but, and that's dimmable also. But they pack down to be protected. You can hang them like this. Or you can take and flip that part around and connect it to these and use it like a handheld so you can shine it like a flashlight. Incredible lanterns, they're not expensive. They run on three simple AA batteries. I can, I, right there, you can see them in there, but just it, is, it doesn't get any better than these. I've used so many of these little lanterns, um, but these ones right here, this Nebo Poppy, God, I can't say enough good things about these ones. Rubber coated, so if you drop them, very well made. Um, any of these are these are fantastic okay this is a, a multi-functional tool here and i did reviews on these but this one you'll see jumper cables and everything in here this thing here will actually jump start my diesel truck 
So this is always charged and it stays in the car. I have one in my car and in my truck all the time. So it's like, a you know, if, you, if your battery dies, I can jump start it with this. But it also makes a fantastic camp charger. Uh, you'll be able to charge your cell phones probably six, seven times for a couple cell phones. We've been using this all week. We are still down to one bar left back in there. Um, but it's been going for six days charging all kinds of stuff. Cameras, cell phones, everything. And uh, it just works fantastic. We plug our phones in at night and set them right here and uh, they're set and good and ready and uh, works incredible can't say enough good things about those either uh, we are using a davis wall tent which is floorless so for us these make for great places to be able to pull out and uh you know stand on when you change, change your clothes or take your clothes off to go to you know bed at night and you're taking your shoes off otherwise with a floorless wall tent we can walk around in boots you're seeing the cord to my actual camera here going to a battery um but uh you know, we can walk around in here. So I love floorless tents as well. And uh, also get yourself some kind of laundry line system in your tent too. We have these hooks here that are like this, uh, that I got a dozen of these so we can use them as we need them. And they just hang on a frame of my wall tent. Um, but if you don't, you can run laundry lines. You see carabiners that are hanging in here. Those are so that I can use them if I needed to for laundry lines. Inside this tub which is my steak tub there are like more carabiners there's uh you can see the two uh the three things of rope down there all kinds of stuff in here that i can run laundry lines and connect them from there and run it up to here run them from down the whole center pole you can do whatever you want to to run laundry lines like if we were raining if it was raining on this particular hunt and uh, we were soaking wet and our clothes were soaking wet, even not using, if we had the wood stove, we'd set the wood stove, we'd put a ton of those hangers all around here and we would actually let the wood stove dry the clothes. Um, but even with this system, if we don't do that, then what we'll do is we'll actually take rope and we'll string rope from the bracket here and run it to the bracket here and we'll hang all those clothes, those wet clothes here and we'll let this heater uh, dry all those clothes out for us. So having some kind of a laundry system or laundry line in there is going to make a big difference for you and let you have uh, your clothes stay dry. So a nice little tip. Um, other than that, I mean, that's really all there takes to make a good, comfortable camp. Um, you know, you don't got to overdo this. Don't overthink it. Notice I don't have a kitchen in here. Okay. I don't need a kitchen in here. I have my pots and pans set in my trailer and I got that little heater cooker I showed you. And uh, if I want to cook stuff, I take that heater cooker. I set it right here on a table. You can, why you can see this particular spot of this table like this, but I set that right here. I put that heater cooker on here. This window's open for venting for it, you know, kind of thing. Let's uh, stuff go out. And then uh, I make macaroni and cheeses. I make uh, all kinds of stuff. We got the Coleman stove that I can put on there and I can cook steaks on whatever I want, but I cook right here real simple and easy. I don't need this elaborate system. When I do dishes, I, got, I take water outside and I do the dishes. I keep in here at all times. In this trailer, at least one on this trip, because we're at a campsite or a campground with running water and all that, I only need one. But this is a gamma lid setup. But here is, see if I can do it one handed here. There we go. But you, it's a regular store bought Home Depot five gallon bucket. And I have a gamma lid on there, and there's water in there, fresh water, and a little dirt down there in the bottom. Um, but uh, but that's water that I can use for doing dishes, for taking showers, for anything I need to, and they don't leak a drop with those gamma lids. Again, I'll put links down below for you. So it's a very good system, um, you know, for, for a camp wash setup and everything, but I don't need that stuff inside there. I don't need a kitchen setup inside there. I come out here, I take that bucket of water, I fill a pan full, and right here, out here on the grass, I, I wash my pans, I rinse them out, I'm done, I put them back. You know, it does not have to be complicated. Let your systems be simple, easy, and efficient, and uh, let them work for you and do what you need them to. But these are some things that will help make life a lot easier and a little more comfortable uh, for you in your camp setup. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I'll have links down below for you and uh, check them out. And any questions, put them in the comments. Thanks for watching.